We are so glad to have you. We're having service here. We're live from New Life, United Pentecostal Church here in Salem, Oregon. And we're just glad to have each and every one of you here and those that are online. We are getting, we're so glad to be live with you and, and uh, just want to invite the presence of the Lord into this place. So thankful for his goodness. So thankful for his faithfulness. And uh, as we begin this service, I just want to draw your attention to Psalms, the 27th chapter. It reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. I know the last part of what I've read today it says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And I feel it's not talking about a building, but it's talking about the presence of God. No matter where you are right now, you might be in your living room or, or you might be uh, uh, another place, but wherever you are right now, you can feel the presence of God because God wants to touch you where you're at. And so as we uh, uh, go into our service today, we want to invite the presence of the Lord wherever you are and where we are, that the presence of God might fill our life right now. Would you lift up your voice and pray in praise and prayer right now with me as we speak to the Lord, inviting His presence into our life. Lord, we love you today. We thank you and praise your mighty name. You are faithful and you are good. You are on the, on the throne of the Most High. And I pray today, God, that your presence, God, would surround your people. Your peace, your comfort, your strength, your power. God, Lord, in your precious name, God, may your spirit speak to us in this hour of chaos, in this hour of, uh, of fear. May your spirit speak to us today. Lord, we ask the name of Jesus. Receive our praise. Receive our worship as we magnify your name. In the name of the Lord Jesus we pray. In Jesus' name. Let's lift him up. Let's praise him in song. As Sister Hannah and Sister Star needs us in song. Let's worship him now. Oh, 
of the living God around the world. We want to pray for the church. Amen. Praise God and call upon God and give us the, the boldness, give us the strength to stay the course. Amen. So if you could join with me right now as you, as you pray for our brothers and our sisters around the world, that God would keep us safe. Amen. That God would help us. Amen. With the power of the Spirit. Lord, we come to you right now and I ask God, Lord, that through your Spirit right now that you would strengthen the body of Christ, that you would strengthen the church of the living God, that you would strengthen our brothers and our sisters around the world, God, both here in America and beyond, God, that you would strengthen us, encourage us, uplift us, let us speak, go forth in the boldness of your Spirit, God, Lord, and keep us safe, God, plead your blood over us in the name of the Lord, but God, let us not be intimidated, let us not be fearful, but let us be strong in the power of your might. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We also want to pray for our government officials that are having to make choices at this time and decisions that are going to affect us here in America. So we want to pray for them right now that God would give them wisdom and direction concerning this virus that's spreading. It is spreading. It is uh, 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 happening. There are those that are being sick. And so we just uh, need wisdom. Amen. Our government needs wisdom. So let's pray. Amen. For our president, for our governor here in Oregon, that God will give them wisdom. Lord, we come before you, God, for our government officials. God, they have to make choices and decisions amongst this, this uh, virus, God, Lord, and this uh, pandemic that's going on, God. I pray, God, for our president Trump. God, Lord, that you'd give him wisdom and those that are working with him in the decisions that they have to make. Our governor, Governor Brown, God, that you'd give her uh, wisdom, God, and the decisions that she has to make for all Oregonians. God, today, that you'd just give them wisdom and direction to keep us safe. God, Lord, in your precious name, Lord, we ask. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the one that sets them up and takes them down. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now I want to pray for all those that are on the front lines, our doctors, our nurses, and others. I know that right now, in fact, I was in communication with me yesterday, volunteering at our medical hospital as a, as a uh, chaplain and also at our state hospital as a volunteer chaplain. Uh, I've been in contact with me, and we just need to pray for them also. Because they're right there trying to, 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 to meet the, the needs of family members and that who's being affected by this virus. And I think it would be good for us to lift them up in prayer. Could you help me pray for our doctors, our nurses, and all those that are on the front lines? Lord, we ask you now, God, that you protect our doctors, our nurses, and those that are on the front lines, God, that are right there trying to help family, trying to help those that are infected by this by this virus, God, that you give them strength. God, in your precious name, Lord, that you would undergird them, God, with strength and wisdom on what to do, God. Lord, God, in your precious name, give them the words to say that they need to say to those that are hurting right now, God. In your precious name, Lord, I pray, God, that you would bless and strengthen and give them, give them, it, Lord, what they need, God, Lord, in strength and in wisdom, Lord. In your precious name, we pray, in Jesus' name. We also want to rebuke fear, confronting the darkness, and release the peace and the light of God in this dark hour. Would you help me right now? Lord, I come against fear. I come against darkness. I come against lies and deceit. God is trying. God to invade. Lord, our, our, our nation trying to invade. Our society around us trying to invade us. God, I come against that. In the name of Jesus, uh, we bind fear. We bind darkness. Uh, God and Lord, by the power of your word, we release peace. We release the light of truth right now. We loose, God, your spirit, God, to minister to those right now. God, that need your strength, that need your power, wherever they may be. God, in your name, I pray, walk into their front rooms, God, and touch their lives, God. Lord, and give them peace and, and, and truth and light. God, in this hour, God, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask. In the name of Jesus, we ask. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We need to pray for Sister Angel. Amen. Let's lift Sister Angel up right now. Amen. Lord, I pray for Sister Angel that you would touch her. God, Lord, what's going on with her body right now? God, you are the healer. 
By your stripes we are healed. And I pray, God, Lord, that she would receive healing right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for you are the great healer. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says, amen, clap your hands, all your people. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph. And I know it might feel a little awkward where you're at in your front room, but I think it's a good thing. Amen. Would you clap your hands with me right now? Amen. Hallelujah. Would you shout out to God with a voice of triumph? He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Shout amen. 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 amen, amen, praise God, praise God. What a mighty God he is. Amen. And wants to work in our life today. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Well, we do uh, have on our Facebook page there on Facebook. And, uh, if you scroll down, you'll see an, an area where you can give online. And so, if you'll go through there, Sister Star has written down the steps that you need to go through to be able to do that. So, if you want to give to, to, to New Life, your tithes and your offerings, I want to encourage you, amen, to give. Because the Bible says when we give, it opens an, an, an avenue for God to bless us. Amen. And we need blessings, the blessings of God in this hour that we're going through as a nation, as you're going through as a family. We don't know. I wish I could stand before you and tell you, Bill, this is what's going to happen tomorrow. This is what's going to happen Tuesday. This is what's going to happen. I wish I could do that. But unless the Lord moves upon me, I can't. So uh, I, I do believe in prophecy. I do believe in the power of the word of God. Amen. But uh, God has not led me to, to t tell us what's going to take place. But I do know this. We need the blessings of God. The Bible says give. And it shall be given unto you. Amen. Luke tells us that. Malachi tells us. Amen. That he rebukes the devourer when we give. He opens up the windows of heaven. And pours into us blessings when we give. Amen. In tithes and offerings. Amen. So I want to encourage you. Amen. Please. Amen. Give. Amen. And if you you're, you're don't want to give online. Amen. Sister Connie. Amen. Is going to send you. Uh, our, our address, amen, and, and, and you can send it to us through the mail, amen, uh, if you want to do it that way, amen, praise God. So uh, there are just some areas, uh, some avenues for you to take if you want to give, uh, and, uh, give online or send it to us through the mail, amen. So uh, I just want to encourage you to do that, amen. It's not about me, it's not about us, it's about you and God blessing you when you give, amen, praise God. Praise God. Well, today, we want to turn our attention to the Word of God. Aren't you thankful, amen, that we are people of the Word, amen. People, amen, that believe in the Word of God, amen. And so I want to turn your attention to the Word of God at this time. If you have your Bibles, and would turn with me to Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Many of you already know Isaiah is probably my favorite book of the Bible, amen. I find a lot of strength, amen, a lot of comfort in the book of Isaiah, Amen. And, and it is one of my uh, books that I like to turn to. In fact, in preparation for this message, I probably read half the book today. Amen. Just just uh, getting strength from God, getting direction from God for my own life. Amen. So uh, I thank God for the book of Isaiah. Amen. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 3 through 5. Verses 3 through 5. Now, before I jump into this, amen, I've got to slow myself down and remind you. Thursday night at 7.30, we will be going back on live, uh, live on, on Facebook with our Bible study on Thursday night. So 7.30, amen. Please make a note, amen, in your calendar, which I know you're busy, busy, busy. I say that as a joke because I know a lot of us aren't busy right now because there's not much we can do. Everything that can be shut down is shut down, and, and uh, we may see more of that happening um, as this uh, pandemic continues. But uh, but I do um, want you to, to, to make sure you're part of that, just touch and base, amen. And if you have any needs, if you have any any of that, please don't hesitate to, to text uh, or, or, uh, or send that to Sister Carney, amen, and she can get in touch with me. Amen, be praying for me, I am. Looks like I will no matter what happens. Uh, I know you're hearing a lot of things going on, but but I am still working, and so uh, 
Um, I am still having to do that. Just pray God's uh, 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 protection over me. And there's others, amen, uh, that are still working and all. So we pray for them. That God just protects them as they go to work. Keeps them safe. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 3 through 5. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked place shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. I want to take just for a few moments here this afternoon a uh, 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 thought from the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Title of this message today is Just a Voice. Just a Voice. Would you pray with me now? As we enter into the time of the message. Lord I pray unto you. And ask you Lord for your anointing of blessing. God upon us. As we deliver your word. To your people today God. That everyone that hears the word of God. May they have a heart to receive. May they have a heart God to follow. May they have a heart to obey your word today. God we pray. God in your precious name let your anointing. God be upon me. As, as your mouthpiece God to speak your word today. God, in your precious name, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a voice. It was in the time of great struggle. It was in the time of great adversity. It was in the time of great chaos. Uh, it was in the time of, of silence. For the, for the, the word of God is not, had not been heard for almost 400 years. A time that... Many Bible scholars call the dark ages between the Old Testament and the New Testament. They were, the people of God were in captivity again by the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire had taken over Judea, Jerusalem, and all that area. And it was in the midst of this darkness. It was in the midst of this uh, 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 chaos and, and, and disappointment and frustration and discouragement that the Bible sends forth a voice of one that came from the wilderness. In fact, the Bible describes it this way In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness in Matthew the third chapter of Judea and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying that the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord make his paths straight and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins and his meat was locust and wild honey then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So in the midst of darkness, in the midst of captivity, God sent a man named John preaching a voice from the wilderness, pre preaching, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen. In the midst of chaos, in the midst of this struggle and pandemic that we're in, I am just a voice coming to you, amen, to tell you that God is still God. Just a voice, amen, in the midst of our, your wilderness, in the midst of our wilderness, to tell you the Lord is not done yet. That God is still God. He's still on the throne of the Most High. No man, no person, no government has dethroned him today. But he is still God. And he's still in charge. And he still knows what he's doing. And he still has a plan for this generation. And he still has a plan for us today. We are not alone. We have not been forgotten about. Amen. We have not become lost on God's priority list. But we are still the church of the living God. And God knows where we are. 
are. God knows what he needs to do to help us to reach and to stay uh, on fire for him. He knows what he needs to do through us to reach this generation. Amen. With the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe. Amen. That there's a harvest coming. I believe that God is going to reach people. I believe that God. Amen. Is going to touch the lives of people. He's not finished yet. And we are the church of the living God. And God's going to use us. Right. Amen. He's not forget, forgotten about us. Just as he had not forgotten about his people in the days of John the Baptist. In fact, it was said of him before his birth by the angel of the Lord declared, amen, about John in Luke the first chapter. And it said of John and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the disobedient, amen, to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Oh, could I bring it to this generation today and tell you God is fixing to use his church, amen, to go forth in the power of his might. God is fixing to use the body of Christ, amen, to turn the hearts of people back to the Lord their God, amen. God is wanting to use us, you and me, amen, the body of Christ. That's why we cannot be weary in well-doing. We can't quit. We can't give up. But we got to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because God is going to use us to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Oh, what a prophecy of John the Baptist that I believe is applicable to us today. We are in the hour of wilderness. We are in the hour of pandemic. We are in the hour of fear. But my dear child of God, hear me today. God is going to use us in the midst of this hour. And we're going to be the ones that are going to lead people to the message of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In fact, even after his birth, Zacharias, John's father, declared this at the birth of his only son, John. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring, for, uh, the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way oh, of peace. Could I preach today? Amen. Could I, could I declare to you today? Amen. I, I know John the Baptist was a voice in his generation, but I feel the voice of God coming upon us, uh, the church of the living God, to tell us, hey, uh, amen, we are the people of the Most High. Amen. We are the people, amen, that God has sent to, to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the people to give the knowledge of salvation to the people around us. Amen. We have the knowledge of salvation. We understand. Amen. And we need to declare and we need to stay steadfast in the knowledge of salvation of our God. Amen. I'm the remission of sins that through the tender mercy of our God, the tender mercy of our God, I am so thankful that the Bible declares to us that the mercy of God is new every morning. I don't care where you're at today. I don't. I. I, I don't mean that to, to, to be ugly. Amen. Uh, but it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how many times you've fallen. It doesn't matter how many times you've messed up. The mercy of God is wanting to reach where you're at right now. The mercy and love of Christ is wanting to touch you right now. If you'll just open up your heart, if you'll just raise your hands where you are, you can invite the presence of the Almighty of God into your home right now. The mercy of God can come into your heart right now and touch you and minister to you and help you to get back up again. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise and God shall be my light. Amen. Praise God. Oh, my friend, you have a merciful God today that loves you, that cares for you. A gracious God today that wants to touch your life. But 
you don't understand, pastor. You don't understand, preacher. I've messed up. I've done this and I've done that. God's mercy is greater than any mistake you've made. God's grace is greater than any mistake you've made. God's love is greater than any mistake you've made. God's salvation is greater than any mistake you've made. To give light to them that sit in darkness. That's what I've come to do. Just a voice. Just a voice. When it comes down to it, just a small voice. From here in Salem, Oregon, trying to help somebody and trying to help you understand God wants to give you light. You may be in darkness right now. You may be in the shadow of death right now. But God wants to bring you light. God wants to bring you peace. God wants to bring you comfort. Amen. Jesus said in John 14, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send the comforter. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Amen. Will I send in my name? Amen. The comforter wants to come into your life. The comforter, the Holy Ghost wants to, to come into your heart today. If you'll just open your heart to him. Amen. It's real simple. All you got to do is repent. If you'll just confess your fault, not to me, not to your neighbor. If you'll just confess your heart, your, your, your fault to Jesus Christ and repent of your sins, He's just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from unrighteousness. 1 John 1 9. And He will fill you with His Spirit today. His Spirit. His peace today. His love today. Praise God. Amen. To guide our feet into the way of His peace. That was just a voice speaking from the wilderness. John's message didn't just stop there. Though he was prophesied to do. He went forth preaching. And in Luke the third chapter. People went out from all the areas to hear him preach and hear him and what he had to say. And his message was much like this in Luke 3, verses 10 through 14. The Bible says that the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered it and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, so let him do likewise. Then came also the publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. His message to them, amen, as he preached to them, was that they were going to have to change their way. If you want the peace of God and the love of Christ, Amen. That God wants to give you so, so, so warmly and so, and so desiringly. He wants to give you that. You're going to probably have to change some things in your life. Amen. You're going to have to come. And, and that's what repentance really is. And that's what he's declaring here. If you want to, to, to prepare your heart for God, you're going to have to repent. You're going to have to change. You're going to have to change some things. And he, he was very exact to those that have spoken to him today. I don't know. What your life is full of. But if there's some things in your life that God would not be pleased with, you're going to have to change. That's what repentance is. If you want the love of Christ, if you want the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God living in you, if you want the peace that passes all understanding in your life, amen, you're going to have to be quick to repent. I've lived for God a number of years, but even I, amen, to this day still have to take time to repent. Amen. Because of my thoughts, because of my attitude, because of some, some things that, that, that I dwell on that, and, and, and say with my mouth that was not right and I have to repent before God. Repentance is necessary. No matter how old you get in God, you're still going to have to not get too far from the foot of the cross. You're going to have to not get too far from getting on your knees before God and in repentance call out to Him when you've done wrong. Amen. It's important to, amen, that we keep the right spirit. The Bible says, He that exalteth himself, amen, shall be abased, but he that humble himself shall be exalted. Amen. We've got to humble ourselves before the presence of God. We do that through repentance and through confession. And that's what John was telling them that day. You've got to. You've got to. Repent. You've got to. Confess yourself before him. 
I wish I could say that the voice that spoke in the wilderness, just the voice in the wilderness, his life was all roses and, 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 and riches and, and glory. But the Bible says there came a time when John was imprisoned by Herod. And it was in the midst of his imprisonment of Herod that John, we find him at his lowest spirit. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus some questions. In Luke 7, and 7, 19, and God called unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And when the men were coming to him, they said, John the Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and evil spirits, and unto them that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto him, Go your way, and tell John the things ye have seen and heard, how the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, and the deaf hears. On the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whosoever is not, shall not be offended in me. Jesus could have simply said, Yes, I'm the one. But Jesus did not do that. Jesus reached into the word of God, reminded him of some prophecies that were concerning the Messiah, the servant of the Lord. You find those prophecies, and I'm not going to turn there today, but you may write it down and look at them later. Isaiah 42, 1 through 7, and Isaiah 61, verse 1. Jesus turned to the Word of God to give him the answer. Today, I turn to the Word of God. Just a voice here in the wilderness. Just a voice here in, 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 in the hour of confusion and, and, and fear. Just a voice here. I am going to help you today by turning just to the Word of God. I want to remind you something today from the Word of God. And that I would want to remind you of is probably the most powerful thing outside of the word itself and that is the name of the Lord. You see, in John, Baptist, in John the Baptist's uh, ministry, there was one thing that he forgot. He did say, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He did tell some of the disciples here, that's the one to follow. But we find in Acts, the 19th chapter, that his disciples, 12 of them here, didn't quite follow his complete instruction. For it came to pass in Acts 19, that while Paul was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto them, uh, 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 and to what they were baptized, and they said unto John's baptism, they were baptized by John the Baptist. But then Paul reminded them, John really baptized with the baptism of the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, amen, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. When they heard this, they were reminded about the power of the name, the importance of the name. In fact, the name of the Lord through Scripture, that particular phrase, this name of the Lord is used 108 times. That's why I bring to you, amen, from the Word of God, the name of the Lord. For you see, in the name of the Lord, Proverbs tells us, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and are safe. I'm just a voice speaking to you from the word today. Bringing to you from the word. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I don't know what to do. Go to the name of the Lord. In fact, Psalm says, in Psalms 20 and 7 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. If you read in 1 Samuel 17, you'll find that David defeats Goliath as he comes to him in the name of the Lord. 
Solomon, he declares, I'm going to build this temple and this house unto the name of the Lord. In 1 Kings 5, 5, 2 Chronicles 6, 6, 10. Elijah stands on Mount Carmel and challenges the prophets of Baal, saying unto them that he would call on the name of the Lord. In 1 Kings 18. And which God answered by fire, let him be God. And you know the story. Amen. As he built the altar again and he called on the name of the Lord, fire fell down out of heaven, declaring that he is God. Paul declares to us that we are to be baptized and wash away our sins by calling upon the name of the Lord in Acts 22, verse 16. Paul also states that we are to be saved by calling upon the name of the Lord in Romans 10 and 13. Paul again tells us that whatsoever we do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, Colossians 3, 17. Just the voice reminding us from the word of God, we have a name in this hour. Amen. We have a name that we can call on. We have a name that we can call on today. Amen. And it's a strong tower. Amen. And it's greater than horses and chariots. Amen. And, and, and it is a name. Amen. That saves us. Uh, that washes away our sin. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. James declares to us. Amen. Now that, that, uh, that we can anoint the sick in James 5. Uh, amen. Anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Jesus declared to us, amen, that in his name we should cast out devils, speak from new tongues, take up serpents, drink any dead and thing and would not hurt us, lay hands on the sick and they would recover. It's in his name. Again, I remind you the name of the Lord. Jesus also declared that we should go teach in Matthew 28, 19. Go teach and baptize them in the name, in the name, in the name. Peter had been given the keys to the kingdom. In Matthew 8, 8 uh, in 16, 19, declared to us, Amen, when asked by man and brother, what should we do? Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Just a voice speaking to the wilderness of our age, of our generation. Amen. For the holy word of God, just as Jesus turned over the word to answer John the Baptist's questions about his Messiah, him being the Messiah. Amen. He turned to the word. I turned to the word in the midst of this darkness. Let's remember the name of the Lord. Let's remember the name of the Lord. Let that be that strong tower. Let that be that protection. Let that be that saving grace of God in our life through the name of Jesus Christ. Peter, who was in prison in Acts the fourth chapter. If you know the story, he healed the, uh, him and John going to, the, to, to the, uh, uh, the temple at the hour of prayer. And there was a lame man there. And he expected to receive from them. And, they, and, and Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I be. In the name of the Lord, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he received his healing. And because of that, 5,000 souls were added to the body of Christ. And because of that, the, the, the administration, amen, took Peter. And John and imprisoned them. And when they questioned them the next day, they asked him, By what power or what name has this miracle taken place? And Peter boldly declared to them that the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth was the one that healed this man. And he went on to say in Acts 4 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We have a power in the name. If you've been, amen, if you have been, uh, amen, saved by the name today, if you have, amen, have had the name called over you in baptism today, amen, you are a child of God. Amen. God's blessings and benefits are upon you. You have the right. In fact, uh, amen. It's interesting. Everybody's quoting from 2 uh, Chronicles 7, 14. Amen. And it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Amen. Uh, 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 and, and, and turn from their wicked way. Amen. Then will I hear from heaven the people which are called by thy, my name today. If you're called by you, his name, you've got a power with God. If you're not, if you haven't been, I'm telling you, you can't be praised, God. Amen. This is the 
hour for you to get the name called over you. Amen. Praise God. This is your moment that God's speaking to you from just a voice here from New Life in Salem, Oregon. Just helping you, trying to reach out to you to say, hey, prepare yourself by calling on the name of the Lord. Just as John the Baptist tried, just as John the Baptist tried to prepare this, his generation for the coming of the Messiah, I'm just a voice telling us to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. We must be ready. We must be prepared by calling upon the name of the Lord. I am so glad, amen, that we can call upon that name. Could you reach out your hands right now and let's begin to call upon his name. Amen. Lord, I pray, God, right now, that whoever, God, is within the sound of my voice, God, wherever they are, if they're in their homes, God, Lord, God, that you, as they reach out to you, that your spirit would come down to them in a powerful way right now. Minister to them. Strengthen them. Let them call upon that name. Lord, I'm so glad that Peter declared to us what that name was. That name is Jesus. And in Jesus' name, we have power. In Jesus' name, we are set free. In Jesus' name, we have remission of sins. In Jesus' name, we can be filled with the Spirit. In Jesus' name, we can be more than a conqueror. Amen. Through Him that loved us, well, I give you the praise and I give you the glory. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for that precious name today, God. Lord, and speak to your people. God, if somebody's fearful, in the name of Jesus, may fear be gone. In the name of Jesus, if they're sick, may they be healed. In the name of Jesus, if they're unsaved, let them be saved in Jesus' name. Lord, in your precious name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we bring this to a closure today, amen. Praise God. We want to uh, leave you with this. Amen. Praise God. Love you.